Coming up on Network Africa. Africa records more than 9,400 confirmed COVID-19 infections and 445 deaths. Alibaba's Jack Ma sends more medical kits to Africa. Plus, Ghana to supply free water for three months to help combat the COVID-19. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Teniola Shubawale. Well, hello. Uh, let's take a look at figures coming in today across Africa. There are now more than 9,400 confirmed COVID-19 infections and 445 deaths. South Sudan, which was one of four countries yet to confirm cases of the coronavirus, has recorded its first positive result. This leaves only Comoros, Lesotho, Sao Tome and Principe without any confirmed cases. The five African countries with the most confirmed cases are South Africa with 1,655, Egypt with 1,173, Algeria 1,320, Morocco 1,113 and Cameroon with 658. The country with most fatalities is Algeria with 152. Meanwhile, 919 people have recovered from the virus on the continent. Alibaba's co-founder Jack Ma has announced that another shipment of medical equipment to fight the coronavirus pandemic is on its way to Africa. The Chinese online retail billionaire said in a tweet that the consignment includes hundreds of ventilators, large amounts of protective clothing and other medical supplies. The first plane load of protective and medical equipment donated to the continent by Mr Ma arrived in Ethiopia's capital Addis Ababa last month. Rwanda's cabinet ministers and top officials say they will donate their April salaries to fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. A statement from the prime minister's office said other officials who will give up their salaries are leaders of national institutions and top government officials. The East African nation has so far recorded 104 COVID-19 cases. The government has started distributing food to citizens who had been relying on receiving pay every day. They have been affected by rigid restrictions imposed during a lockdown that is due to end on April 19. Some concerns have been raised about the food distribution program, with some citizens saying that they were given too little to last them a day, while some officials have been jailed for theft. Last week, the International Monetary Fund approved a $109 million loan to Rwanda to help tackle the spread of coronavirus. Ghana's president, Nana Akufo-Addo, has announced that his government will pay people's water bill for the next three months as the country tries to combat the spread of the coronavirus. Washing hands with soap and water is considered one of the best ways to prevent the transmission of the virus. There have been 214 confirmed cases of coronavirus in the country and five deaths. Last week, Ghana started a two-week lockdown in three cities, Accra, Tema and Kumasi, that were identified as hotspots for the spread of the virus. In a televised address, President Akufo Addo said the government has urged the utility companies to ensure a consistent supply of water and electricity and restore any disconnected accounts. Water supply tankers will also be made available to provide water to vulnerable communities. 
We'll have more on the situation in Ghana. But in the meantime, here in Nigeria, a 500 billion naira COVID-19 crisis intervention uh, fund is to be established by the federal government to cushion the effect of the COVID-19 pandemic on Nigerians. The intervention, which was announced by the Minister of Finance, Mrs. Zainab Ahmed, at a briefing in Abuja, targets at a special works program, which will create thousands of jobs across the country. She says President Mohamedou Buhari has also approved life insurance packages for health workers on the front line fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. The President has approved the establishment of a 500 billion Naira COVID-19 crisis intervention fund. The establishment of this fund will evolve and provide the much needed cash resources from various special accounts already existing in the Federation. And this is a process that we will be doing together with the National Assembly. We've already consulted with them, but there will be a need for them to pass a bill that allows us to take funds from some of the existing special accounts. This 500 billion Naira is proposed to be utilized for upgrading of healthcare facilities as earlier identified by the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 and already approved by Mr. President. Two, it will also include financing the federal government's interventions to support states in improving their healthcare facilities Three, it will include the financing and the creation of special public works programs. And four, it will include funding any other additional interventions that may arise and that will subsequently be approved by Mr. President and if necessary also by the National Assembly. Meanwhile, the United Nations, in partnership with Nigeria, has launched a single basket fund for COVID-19 in the country. The fund will coordinate all donations from members of the United Nations to the Nigeria government's efforts to stop the spread of the pandemic. According to the United Nations Resident and Humanitarian Coordinator, the fund will also help to cushion the effects of the pandemic on the country's economy and the health sector. Officials of the United Nations and members of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 arrive in the venue for the launch of the United Nations COVID-19 Basket Fund in Abuja. The fund is expected to coordinate all United Nations support for the Presidential Task Force in a fight against COVID-19. Special focus will be on how the fund will help to cushion the harsh effect of the pandemic on the nation's economy and the health sector. The COVID-19 basket fund has been designed to serve within the one COVID uh, financing and investment platform through which the different stakeholders, i.e. the United Nations, other multilateral and bilateral donors, as well as other key stakeholders can channel their financial contribution to the multi-sectoral efforts of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 response. Although neither the federal government nor the United Nations representatives is willing to speak on the amount of money for the takeoff, the UN believes strongly that the success of this project will depend largely on the kind of leadership provided by the Nigerian government. For the response to be effective, it needs to build on Nigerian leadership, your policies, your priorities. Focusing, of course, on the immediate needs, but being aware as well of the impacts for the most vulnerable of our societies. The federal government expresses appreciation for the gesture. The one COVID-19 basket fund is robust and is capable of rapid procurement of equipment and consumables, as well as supporting social economic interventions of the vulnerable groups as well as efforts aimed at scaling up surveillance, testing, and clinical management of the critical ill. I believe that the journey is just the beginning. We have a long way to go, and the road will be rough ahead. So we would need all the help you have, particularly the United Nations group, 
who work all over the world, and uh, particularly with the WHO, to bring the aggregate experience you have from everywhere to bear here. Nigeria has so far been commended by the World Health Organization for effectively managing the pandemic. This pledge of support from the United Nations is no doubt an additional boost to do even more. Let's head back to Ghana now, where President Nana Kufado has announced that his government will pay people's water bills for the next three months as the country tries to combat the spread of coronavirus. Joining us now uh, for more is Joy TV correspondent Israel Aye. Uh, Israel, how are Ghanaians reacting to the absorption of water bills by the government? Well, they are indeed excited. Uh, and if you go on social media, you notice that people are pretty much excited about the fact that this is what the government is deciding to do for them. There are those, though, uh, who, well, not everybody has water supply from the Ghana Water Company. And so those ones are asking, what's happening, what's going to happen to us? Because if I'm not getting to enjoy, because I'm not getting the lines running to, to my home, and I'm not going to enjoy this free uh, water for three months that it's been talked about, what happens to me or, or what interventions have been put in place for me? And these are questions that we're asking. But yes, people are, are excited about it. Others are also asking, why don't you add electricity to it as well? Mm. Yeah, that is, a, that is a good question. Uh, but apart from that, though, and what other measures have been put in place to help citizens while the country continues a lockdown for another week? You mentioned that people are asking about electricity. Uh, any comments on that end? Well, we haven't heard anything from government as far as electricity is concerned, even though there are some, you know, agitations. Well, not agitations, but there are a number of agencies that are calling on government that government probably at this point in time needs to reduce electricity tariffs. And the reason why they are asking that is not so much for our COVID, but it's because they are looking at the, the time we set the last tariff, electricity tariffs. And electricity tariffs for us mainly has to do with uh, our thermal plants because we rely a lot on uh, crude oil and heavy fuel oils. So they're saying, if at the time we set the tariffs, the crude prices were that high and it has been reduced significantly to the point where you know, a barrel of crude oil is going for like $20, we should have the automatic adjustment reducing these tariffs, electricity tariffs as well. And that's something that people are pushing for. But yeah, they, they're still on it. But yeah. government hasn't ended there. Another thing that they, they have done, which uh, is quite exciting when people are talking about the fact that government has decided that it's going to make meals available to the vulnerable. They're looking at about 400,000 people who uh, may not have that much and so would have to be supported by government. Israel, just before I let you go in very quickly, if you can, bring us up to speed on the situation in the country. Has there been any recent cases of recovery or fatalities? All right, so we have, there hasn't been any recent. What we have is the figure, which has always been the case. We, we've had five deaths for some time now, and that is still the number that we have. I'm actually moving to the website of uh, a dedicated website of the Ghana Health Service, which talks about COVID, and uh, they provide figures up to date. So what we have so far at this point, as we're speaking, as I'm speaking with you, is 214 right. cases. Of the 214 cases, we have five deaths. We have three uh, recoveries. Right. And we have some who have been tested well, they were treated and they've mm. tested negative now, but they are being asked to go home and to be managed at home. Yeah. Eventually, essentially, they are on their way uh, to recovery or full recovery. All right, then. And, and is that we have about uh, 49. All right, yeah, then. Yeah. Israel Aya, Joy TV correspondent, thank you so much for bringing us up to speed on the situation in the country and do stay safe. Thank you, you too. Still ahead on the program. South African bride and groom arrested over wedding amid a lockdown. We'll bring you details in a moment. Stay with us.